All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Today is day four of the Solo Barno build. We're gonna be covering a storyboard, which is how we prep all of our columns. We got our piers done, we're ready to start building. But the important thing is to make sure all of our column, columns are prepped consistently. Um, so we'll make a uh, storyboard, which is just a template to marking all those out. It, it uh, improves your efficiency. It improves your accuracy and it will guarantee that all of your girts are running nice and level and that all your trusses are sitting level. So let's go ahead and jump into the show. guys um, this short video is going to be on marking your piers for elevation so if you're going to build your walls on the ground this is something you are going to need to do if you decide to just stand your columns individually you can actually um, do this later but either way if you mark your columns before you stand them individually or whether you build them on the ground you can have all your marks on your columns so that all you have to do is line your girts up with those marks and nail them on. So I feel like this is a very important part to make you more efficient, make you more accurate. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a rotary laser. I use the Stabila LAR350. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the highest pier. I'm gonna mark that at zero. I'm gonna zero my grade stick out it, and then I'm gonna go around to each pier and mark how much I need to add to the height of that pier to get to my baseline. That way, when I'm marking all of my columns, they're all I have to add to every single one other than the ones that are at zero. Hopefully that makes sense. That way when I put my grade board on, none of the piers will interfere with my grade board. So step one, find the highest pier. All right, I found that the one over in the far corner is the highest. So that is now gonna be my zero. So. I will zero my receiver out on that, go around and hit all the other ones and write plus whatever the measurement is. All right guys, I have all of these piers marked. So I'll show you just up close, that was zero. So this pier right here was the highest one. So I zeroed my grade stick out on that one. And this one, plus nine sixteenth. This one, plus one quarter. So on and so forth. So that's that step, pretty simple. Find your highest pier, zero your um, grade stick out on that one, and then mark all your others, plus whatever the measurement is. And then um, I'll show you how we use that with our storyboard or template, whatever you want to call it, to mark out our piers. All right, making your storyboard or your template. This is a two by four. You mark all your girt, location, girt locations on it. You can mark your uh, porch headers on it, and it basically tells the story of your wall, essentially. So you can use that board to mark every single column that you have. That way, they are all identical. So. As you saw before in the step where we uh, marked grade on all of our uh, piers, say a pier says plus one half inch. At the bottom of our column, we'll make a line at one half inch. We have now added the half inch that we needed to get that pier up to level with the top pier. Now we start our storyboard at that mark, and then all of the marks will match every other column. So. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark out my storyboard. I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna add two inches for insulation, five inch for a slab. So say you're not gonna put insulation and you're gonna have four inch slab, you'd mark four inches up. And then from there, you'd mark your um, Wayne's coat board and everything else. All right, so we're gonna start here at the bottom. I know I'm putting two inches of insulation down. 
So I got two inches. I'm gonna have a five inch slab. So that's seven inches. So that's gonna be my first mark right there. We got two inch insulation, five inch slab. So now I know from this point here to the center of my wainscot board is 37 inches. Put that at two and three quarter. Mark, mark. That's my Wayne's coat. Now, I use a lot of three by five windows. So what I'll do is I'll mark my great or my girts all the way up, two foot on center, and then I'll make sure that this bot, this little two by four girt that I go between the Wayne's coat and the bottom lines up with the bottom of those three by five windows. That way I don't have to add anything extra um, as far as girts for my windows when I have three by fives. All right, so close up, you see I have two inches of insulation, five inch slab, so that's my finished concrete floor. So from there to the center of my wainscot board is 37 inches. Then I can pull two foot on center from either the top or bottom, doesn't matter, I pulled from the bottom. So this is my three foot mark. We have five foot mark, seven, nine, 11, 13, and then here's 14, which is my ceiling height which that will be where the heel of the truss sits. Now, the next thing I need to know is the heel height. So I will check the heel height on my truss. My buildings are measured from outside of girt to outside of girt, so this truss will actually stick an inch and a half outside of my column. So I marked an inch and a half. Check my heel height at that point, which is 13 and 5 eighths. So that's will be, that'll be what my mark is, and that's where I cut my columns. So 13 and 5 eighths. Mark 13 and 5 eighths. Cut, heel, Tr truss heel. So that's where the, the truss will sit. So that's where I gotta make my notch in my truss. And then that's where I gotta cut my column off. So this storyboard is prepared as far as all of the girts are concerned. All right, so now I'm gonna mark out and put some little tick marks uh, for my porch framing. So I know that my porch ceiling is at nine feet. So um, that's the porch ceiling. So I measured from the top of my slab to nine feet, that's where my ceiling is going to be. So I'm going to bump this two by six down in this spot. That way I have enough for trim on the bottom. And then I'm going to add a second one on the top. So when my sub rafter comes across here, it'll land here and then I'll have um, places to nail plywood, whatever I need above in that space uh, between the ceiling and the top of the um, porch. So I know that my porch has a 312 pitch and it's the pitch is going to start at 11 feet out. So I need to take 11 feet times three, that's 33 inches. I'm going to have a five and a half inch sub rafter. So I need to take 33 plus five and a half inches, that's 38 and a half inches is the top of my rafter. So for nine feet, I measured up to 38 and a half. Um, my two by 12 I'm gonna put here for my uh, rafter header um, will just get put right on top of this. So I measured down 11 and a quarter, it comes down to here. So that will be my porch header. 
Now, with the, the way this porch laid out, it wasn't really convenient because I have a girt up here. However, I'm gonna need a nailer right here for trims so I can add a two by four or another two by six there so that I have enough for all my trims above uh, the porch. So just keep that in mind. Um, so I'll probably, I'll mark, mark that right here. And then uh, this side will be done. And then on the other side of this storyboard template, whatever you want to call it, I can mark all of my interior girts. And by doing that, I can mark them. Then when I'm going to finish the inside, if it's going to be finished, all my marks are already there. And I'm good to just uh, start uh, putting up the boards when I get to that point versus having to go through doing a laser and all that. All right, so like I said, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to write interior. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my interior um, so that it's ready to go. So I'm just going to mark seven inches. And then from there, we're just going to do two foot on center all the way up. So we got two, four, this, eight, All of my sidewall columns, um, we do eight foot on center. So all of our sidewall columns come with the center notch loose at the top. So you can see right here, the center notch breaks here. There'll be a couple screws on the other side holding this in so I can easily remove this, cut it to where my heel height is, and then my truss will sit in this little gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how Using our storyboard, uh, we mark out this column. So I'm gonna do this one right up here. So I'm gonna start in that far back corner. And I know that one is zero, that's my zero, so this is easy. So since that's my um, zero pier, I have to add nothing to the bottom of this. So my storyboard will line up with the bottom of this column. So you can see right there, I'm gonna line this up flush with the column. And then we will just transfer these marks all the way down and that one will be ready. Now, what I did with the storyboard is one side is the exterior of the building and then one side is the interior. So what I can do is flip this over, mark the interior side and then this column will be marked on the inside and outside. So really speeds the process up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my bottom end is nice and square. So it is, I know this column is zero. So I'm gonna line that up and I'm just gonna make my marks. All right, so top of this is all marked. This one does not have um, any porch attached to it. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. This is a corner column, so my truss is gonna get attached to the side. So I do not have to notch the interior. I just have to cut the top of this off, which I'll do. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a chainsaw to do that. So right here, I have my cut mark. So you can use a big circular saw to cut this off. I have a, a giant saw that I usually use, but I'm operating here without my tool trailer. So I'm just gonna use a chainsaw to zip this off. And then this one, this one will be ready. All right, now I flip this column over. Now I can mark the interior uh, girt locations. All right, now we can put this one in place.
I looked at the measurements on the next two columns, which are plus nine sixteenths, plus one quarter. So measure up nine sixteenths, strike a line, that's where my storyboard starts. One quarter, mark line, that's where this board starts. So I can actually mark two of these at a time, just line that up. I can lay my storyboard on here and I can mark both of these at the same time. And then these I will actually have to notch out the center um, for the truss to sit in. Line that up with the line. I'm using that when I get it all the way across with this. Now I'll take you down here and we will show you how we notch these out. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut these ends off where they need to be. So when you order your columns, on your set wall. You want to specify that you want your center notch left loose. Now my truss will sit right in there, in this pocket. Alright guys, I have all of the sidewall columns prepped. Um, they're marked. They're marked both on the exterior and they are marked on the interior for my 2x4 girts on the interior for the finish. So I know I'm finishing the inside of this, so I went ahead and marked those. Make my life a lot easier. Little time up front, but it will save me a ton of time on the back end. So now I'm going to prepare the end wall columns. So I'll show you how um, I mark those out and get those all cut and prepped. So prepping your end wall column. So a couple things you need to know. You need to know uh, the pitch of your roof and you need to know your post spacing. I have an eight foot post spacing. I have a 612 pitch on this roof. So that means 
I am going to times eight feet times six inches, or eight times six. So I'm covering eight feet, so each foot I'm rising six inches. So from the edge of my building to my center of my first column, I am rising 48 inches. So what I'll do is I'll mark out my column um, as normal, and then at the, the, my top cut, I will add 48 inches to that. And then each time you move in towards a building, you got to add another 48 inches. So um, the second column in, I would have to add 96 inches. So we're going to go ahead, get one of these prepped. All right, guys, so you lay your storyboard out on your end columns just the same. Make all your marks. You can see this is where the heel of the truss sits. Um, that is where the top of the heel or top of the top cord is. So from this point here, we add 48 inches because we're rising six inches and we're going eight feet. So eight times six is 48. So we make that mark in the middle and then that's where our 612 cut is and that'll be really close um, to the top cord of the truss. That way our columns go all the way up to the top of the trusses. So on my next ones, I will add another four feet. So from the top of the truss, I will add 96 inches. And so that's those out there. Um, I'll get these put in place or just kind of set where I want them. And then we'll go ahead and mark the others. All right, so this is the second column in from the corner. So with the 612, every eight feet, I gotta rise 48 inches. So from the top of my truss, I marked up eight feet, made my 612 pitch cut. So now all of the columns are prepared and ready to rock and roll. They are marked on the inside and outside. So that will definitely speed up the process uh, during the build. A little extra time up front, but saves you a lot of time down the road. All right, guys, hopefully this was helpful. Make sure you come back. We're going to keep going through these days of the solo barn build. But if you guys are interested in designing your own barnuminium, um, check out Back 40 Buildings. That's our design company. Um, we can help you custom design, or we have lots of stock plans you can choose from and do modifications. We do stick frame, steel frame, and post frame. Also, if you want to self-build or self-GC, uh, go ahead and check out our patron group. It's a group just for you guys. We talk about different topics every month. We bring on uh, special guests. You get to ask me questions. We do lives. It's awesome. It's a great community of other self-builders. Check that out. But as always, we appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Share us with your friends, and we will catch you on the next video.